Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Getting Techy with SAS Alerts. In today's video, we're going to be talking about token theft. Also, it's been called man in the middle attack and Microsoft coins it the adversary in the middle attack. Whatever you want to call it, it's basically the same kind of attack. It's a user is tricked into clicking a phishing link and then that link redirects them to the attacker's server and the attacker server is stays in between the communication between uh, the victim and Microsoft captures everything in between. Uh, hopefully you've seen at least one or two of my videos about that. It explains exactly how it works. Uh, if not, we can definitely look, put a link down below to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like, both from the victim and from the threat actor's perspective. But in this video, I want to really concentrate on things that you can do from within SAS alerts to detect this sort of activity. And keep in mind that these techniques are, uh, are very effective, but they're not foolproof. Nothing is. Uh, by its nature, this attack is supposed to be stealth. It's supposed to fly under the radar and be very hard to detect. But hopefully uh, these rules will give you definitely a fighting chance. And, and as things progress, as detection improves, uh, hopefully we'll be able to alert on them even better. Uh, let's start out with a couple of the rules that uh, I personally recommend for uh, token theft. There's a couple of techniques that we're going to be talking about. Some of them do require for you to be using Unify. And if you don't know what that is, it's essentially a way for us to integrate with your RMM and pull in the list of devices, get information and compare the information we're seeing on the RMM to the information that we're seeing and we're getting from Microsoft. And this helps us to identify if a device is known or unknown. Unify does a whole bunch of really cool things, especially being able to map users to devices. However, for these rules, what we're going to be doing is we're going to assume that if the device is registered and has an RMM agent, then it has a certain level of trust. And uh, if that's too relaxed for you, you can definitely increase that and make adjustments. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's start off with a couple of our Unify rules. Uh, this one is going to be using uh, token use from a, a non-RMM slash non-intra um, ID device and what that means is let me show you here we jump into the conditions and we take a look i'm going to make myself a little bit smaller so you can see everything and what we're looking at is a couple of things we are looking for the the device the description details to include the first factor was uh, satisfied by a claim and the token that means they use the token to authenticate uh, and then next step is uh, for us to look at this device and say, is this device considered unknown and unmanaged? And if it is, that might be a problem. We're next going to evaluate, is this a mobile? And it's not a mobile, this is false. Okay, that's fine. So if I was the attacker and I was using this token and I'm coming from a, a device that does not exist in my RMM, it's going to be considered an unknown and unmanaged device. And so far, since I'm coming from that device, I'm also not a mobile device. My last step is, do I have an Entra device ID? And if I don't, then this rule is going to trigger. And what does it mean to have an Entra device ID? Well, that means your device is either registered or joined with Entra. And specifically, it's joined or registered with the, the tenant that this user belongs to. So if I'm authenticating with Bob's at Microsoft.com, and I'm coming from a device that is not registered in Microsoft.com's tenant, then it's going to trigger because it's not going to really have that, uh, that ID unless you are a member of that tenant. Um, so this one can be very effective, but that's just one step, one rule. And we do have three other ones that we can also use. And if this, uh, if you do not have Unify, that is okay. You can still make this effective. You can still, you can exclude this line right here where it says device status. You can remove that, but you increase the chances for false positives. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to be getting, you're going to be looking for this very common event. It's common to authenticate with a token and it's common to do that with not, you know, micro, uh, not mobile owned devices. And if someone has a, a home device, a BYOD, and they're authenticating, they may not be registered or joined with Entra. It's a great way to encourage them, but it's very easy to, to hit this. Uh, 
one thing that you can consider doing and that we have another rule that's very similar is adding other criteria maybe add the uh, is this device a known for anonymous is it a vpn or is it known for to be a threat is it known to be attacking or abusing so that's something that you can definitely consider and one last thing we are looking for these four events these are the four different types of authentication events that can happen uh, within Microsoft and that you will see in SAS alerts. All right, let's jump back to a couple of our other rules. So our next one is going to be dangerous authentication from a non entre device. This is a good one because it does not use the uh, Unify, although it could if you wanted it to. There's nothing preventing you from making changes to these rules and making them suit your environment uh, and making them effective, making so that they don't trigger unless it's a, a true threat. This one, again, we're gonna hit the, the four different authentication types. Now let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And we're going to be looking for, is this an Entra ID, registered or join? It said if it's not, okay, well, they're gonna proceed the next step. Is this coming from an anonymous IP address? Has this IP address been known to be a proxy or possibly a VPN or maybe a Tor? Okay, if that is true, then we're gonna proceed to the last step as if this is mobile. So this is very similar to what we were just talking about. This is it within, you know, using the, the actions that we talked about for the IP address threat information. Uh, moving down, a little bit of the same thing, except now we're hitting threat instead of just anonymous. We're saying, okay, well, is this uh, registered? No, but is this a threat IP address? And the threat basically means is abuse or attacking or either one true. So if one of those is true, then the IP address is considered a threat. Uh, and then lastly, we have our mobile device. So this is a good rule, especially if we're not using uh, Unify. Uh, if we are using Unify, uh, then what we could do is we could say, you know what? Okay, I'm, I'm using Unify, so I want to know, uh, I only want this to trigger if the device status is unmanaged and unknown. So that means that all four of these things have to be uh, accurate and defined in order for this rule to trigger. So it cuts down on the chance of false positive. We have to hit, uh, like I said, the device ID, the threat, the mobile device, and then lastly, we have our, our it doesn't exist in the RMM. So if one of these it contradicts itself, so if one of these was like, um, this is it's actually a, this is a mapped device or this is an unmapped device, then this is going to not be uh, true, which means none of these are going to trigger. So this requires all of these be 100% accurate. All right, so let's move on to our next rule. All right, let's look down here. Let's click on this one right here. This was the Axios agent rule. This one has been very effective, although I want to explain a couple of different things that you might be seeing that might be uh, causing a little bit of questioning, uh, specifically the different types of events that this is going to be looking for. And the one that always uh, raises a couple of eyebrows is the authentication failure. And that's because authentication failure shows up when the authentication is interrupted. And interrupted means when I'm signing into Office and it's saying, do you want to stay signed in? Well, often that will show up as an authentication failure in our system, even though it's successful. So we monitor those as well. Uh, the rest of these are, are pretty straightforward. A lot of the same authentication with the addition of, of the conditional access violation. So I want to know if someone is actively trying to get into my account that shouldn't be uh, maybe I need to have a talk with the user and find out what they clicked on and maybe encourage them not to click on it. <laughs> All right, as we're going down, we are looking for the Axios agent. And this aligns with a particular type of token theft that is active currently uh, that uses this a totally legitimate agent to connect to Microsoft. Uh, we are also looking for a couple of description details and the office home is the way that they kind of obfuscate what they're actually doing. And next up, we have a couple more filters. Same with Axios, except different description detail. This is just going to be called unknown. Now, lastly, we have same Axios agent from other and from the specific ASN that we have noticed most of this traffic coming from, and that's Global Internet Solutions. Uh, there is 
possibility that might be good traffic coming out of that that data center one day but so far even if you removed all of these conditions and just alerted on on activity from global internet solutions i would probably say it's probably still very effective uh, but this one has been extremely valuable to our team and has caught many token theft before they even got too far at all so this one is a good one definitely put that one into uh into place uh, next up, we have the outside approved location, but this is uh, one that is not running an, an RMM agent. Let's take a look at this. Now, most threat actors are smart enough to, to start attacking from locations that are nearby geographically where their victim is going to be, um, especially if it's they're attacking a lot of US-based uh, companies, they're going to want to come from a US-based IP address. And by the way, that's what makes that last one so effective is those global internet solution IP addresses are from within the US. So this one is going to be looking at if the threat actor makes a mistake and he signs in from outside approved location. Let's say maybe your token was stolen and now it's going to be used from outside approved location out of the country. Maybe they're just firing it up, see if it works. And they don't realize that you are actively monitoring against that. Well, if you are, then we're going to be looking at this outside approved location event. We're going to be determining, hey, is this device uh, going to be registered with Unify? Right now it's saying that it is an unmanaged unknown and that aligns with our non RMM. Uh, this is also saying, is this a, uh, a mobile device? And we're saying, no, it's not. And lastly, we have the, the Entra ID. Uh, does it exist or not? Remember, if any of these do not match the exact filter, this will not trigger. It's not going to trigger off of just one of these. That's why all these and statements are here instead of or statements. Now, if you did not have Unify, that is OK. This can be still very, very effective. But what you'll want to do is you'll want to remove this line right here, the unmanaged unknown, because your Unify status if you're not using Unify, is most likely going to be organization without devices. So what we want to do is we want to remove this. And what does that do for us? It basically just says if I see any outside approved location sign ins, that's not a mobile device. Not registered with Entra, I'm going to trigger. And this may be one of those events that you just have trigger and your action is to call the client and find out, hey, you know what's going on? Why are you signing in from outside of the approved location or outside the US or wherever you are established? Uh, and, and why are you doing it from a device that we don't have any visibility over? So that's, it's like I said, it can be very effective. Uh, when it comes to token theft, it's really just a matter of detecting unusual activity coming from unusual locations and hopefully unusual devices. It's one thing that the token theft logs are always going to show you is that it's not a device that you are used to seeing. It doesn't relay that RMM information. It doesn't relay that Entra information. Uh, so it's always going to say, hey, there's something very, very suspicious here. Um, I hope these rules help you get started on your protection for token theft. I think that if you start using some like these and modify them, make them customized to your to your own customers in your own environment, that you'll definitely have a fighting chance against token theft. Uh, one thing that you can always do if you're unsure about any of the rules that I talked about here, set them for alert only. Set them for alert only, maybe even make the um, alert severity low. And if you do that, then if it does trigger, it's not going to create a ticket in your RMM. And what you can do is you can come in here maybe after a week or so and just come in here and click on the, on the little uh, icon for the last seven days of trigger history. And that will show you how many times would this rule have triggered and is it legitimate activity? And if it is, maybe I need to make some tweaks to my rules. Maybe I need to add some exceptions. Uh, very easy to do. And, and like I said, it's a great place for you to start this year. These are very similar to the rules that we use um, internally. So hopefully they should help you guys as well. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please definitely uh, consider joining our Discord server. We have great discussions there over rules that our other partners have found very effective and always happy to hear, you know, what you may have to say as far as with these rules or any of the other rules that we have 
on our Discord server. But also keep in mind, you also have access to the rule templates at the top here. Uh, if you want a place to get started, there's some great ones in here as well, including ones that monitor for rule creation, which is um, definitely one of those steps that the threat actors do once they do gain access. Uh, so keeping an eye on that can also be very, very helpful. Well, I really appreciate you guys spending some time with me. And as always, cover your sad.